All right, we're back. We got another episode of the climb, and we're going to talk about <laughs> life and sales and stress dealing with professional work. So, fellas, Alex and Jake, Jake and Alex, welcome back. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. Yes, excited to be back. Jake, are you here? Can, can are you? Yeah. Back? I think, I think Jake's trying to close a deal or something. Yeah, oh, sorry about that, guys. That was, that was a two milliner. Uh, yeah, guys. I mean, happy happy to be here. It, it cut out in the middle. You know, I was in the middle of the call, making uh -huh. sales, smiling, dialing, being a part of it. Happy to be here. Thanks for having us. Um, very excited. Yeah. yeah. And it's a, it's a fun topic because we both, you know, we all of us have discussed how, you know, this is kind of a profession, how we build capital. It's really not necessarily building it for love. We're building it to kind of help, you know, life around us pretty much like most of the people that we know. And what comes with that is these annoying stressors of uh, sales and different types of professional client services, stuff that we uh, people who can potentially manage a relationship find ourselves in. And, you know, just being really close with Jake and Alex, I know that they've kind of brought into the same hurdles and the same sales memes on, uh, you know, Instagram that we like to share each other. Oh, yeah. So, you know, a couple insights, a couple battle stories. I think even if you're not in sales or, you know, client services, a lot of this would be helpful just to kind of, you know, take on, you know, your day being less stressful at work and trying to just in general live a better life inside work and outside of work. So what do you say, fellas? Love it. I'm all about it. And you know, it's fun. Uh, you said in the beginning there where it's like, you know, this isn't, you know, the thing we love. It just, it, it creates the life that we want type of thing. But I, I do think sales is like one of the better skills you can have and apply mm -hmm. it to things you do care about. So I, I'm pretty excited long-term about, all of us being in like a similar area, developing this skill. And as we go on to, to things later in our careers, whether it's our own companies or whatever, I feel like sales is like a really pivotal thing to, to have and to meet people to the benefit your life later in life, even if it isn't your, your, the thing you want to be doing. So sure. yeah, um, I, I think there's, there's great value in it and it's been, it's been exciting and I'm excited to hear how you guys feel about it too. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, at least for me, um, I know you mentioned, um, you know, like our passions are sort of separate. I'm trying to integrate the passion in sales. You know, I, I work for a company that works in sports and I'd love to yeah. work for like, you know, a front office in sports. And so this is, at least for me is a, sort of in the Venn diagram of both uh, sales, making money, but also sort of a uh, stepping stone job to a career in that uh, that field that, yeah, hopefully could be more of a passion, kind of like you talked about. So it'd be great to, you know, I think maybe for all of us, a good exercise to see the differences in industry because we're kind of in across different industries. So that might be a cool, like, compare and contrast maybe for this, you know? Yeah, I'd love mm -hmm. that. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure a lot of people can relate uh, to all the different things that we do, but what you said, Jake, was actually, um, you know, it said to me when I first started sales uh, many years ago uh, outside of college that it's a really great life skill um, to talk with people, to learn, um, you know, how to manage, you know, different personalities and, and to work with different people and, and kind of read um, other, other ones. You know, people, whether they're having a good day, they're having a bad day, you kind of have to change your tone, your inflection, uh, based who you're talking with, uh, even... Mm -hmm. Ryan, my, my former roommate, or my best friend, you guys know, Whiteley, he oh, yeah. would make fun of me when I would work from home if it was like a snow day, because I was <laughs> speaking with recepti receptionists from uh, a doctor's office, and I would have a little bit of a high voice, and I the stage <laughs> yeah. really gentle, and, mm -hmm. and he was like, what are you doing over there? But uh, it mm -hmm. kind of teaches you a lot how to, you know, kind of communicate with uh, someone, and and like you said, can lead to some soft skills that are pivotal for whatever yeah. you want to do in life um, that's down the road. Mm -hmm. and, and what I found too is, I mean, I think you, you've been formally in sales longer than both Alex and I. Um, however, when we were doing comedy, a lot of it was doing promotion and marketing, which is, you know, hand in hand with sales. I think mm -hmm. those two things are, are right next to each other and you're kind of effectively selling yourself um, as the product, you are the product in stand-up comedy. And so you're trying to sell yourself to comedy clubs, to agents, to the audience. 
you know, and again, it's you're reading people. It's a way different audience, right? It's a bigger audience, but it's still reading, you know, body cues and language and nonverbals and understanding those things. And I think one of the biggest things since going more more formally into like a sales position and then having that background is figuring out when I am supposed to to change from like, I, I find it so easy to connect with someone, but to change into like a formal, professional, credible type person, like you need to be very distinct and you have to be concise and you have to know exactly where you want the conversation to end up, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's the difference is previously, I just want the conversation to go. I don't care where it goes and it's open to you. And, and I find I connect with people that way a lot because, you know, I have no motives, right? Mm -hmm. It's just a sincerity in getting to know someone. But in sales, there's inherently a motive at the end. Mm -hmm. And so I think being able to like, not, not dis like you hear like people that do it wrong will put that and like hide it and try and trick someone. It feels tricky. There, I, it, it's interesting too with like the East and West Coast mentalities of the East Coast. I've found it's very straightforward. It's like I am selling to you. Here's what I'm I'm selling you. It's very good. I promise you. West Coast is like, hey, we get along. This is mm -hmm. what we're doing. Here we go. And it's and then it's like much more finessing the stuff mm -hmm. going on. Um, so I'm curious for both of you. Do you guys see any of those types of things? What are your strengths and weaknesses? Because that's that's just me personally. I don't. I, yeah. Alex, I'm sure yours is similar, but I. Yeah, a lot of good stuff in that. I mean, you, you got me thinking all about, about all different sorts of stuff. I think the first thing to kind of parse out from that would be, um, you know, what is it that you're you're selling um, and, and how do you feel about it? Because, you know, you talked about like the sneaky or the uh, sort of negative sales tactics. You think of like, I guess used car salesman has the biggest trope, you know, or the biggest stereotype of that. Um, I think that's what I was fearful of initially when I would think of sales and, and thought about doing sales is like, I didn't want to feel like I was screwing people over. And so I had experience um, back in Arizona when um, it was like a day job and we were still doing comedy and was doing uh, Therospex. So it was um, specifically glasses for people with photophobia. They got migraines from light sensitivity and all the customers that I would talk to and then try to help or I guess I should say was trying to sell to, I felt like I was helping in like the, the overwhelming response for the people when they got it was like, thank you so much. You like, you really, really changed my life in a positive way. And that made it so much easier for me than to be upfront. Like you're saying, Jake, like in that East coast style of like, this is our product. Um, I've noted like, like we, we have, however you get the information, like you signed up for this, like, this migraine convention. So is this something you're experiencing? And then going from there, um, I found a similar thing with my current job where everyone who has registered to do like a, a sports prospect camp, that's who I'm selling to now for, you know, a software for recruiting um, to connect with college coaches. And so everyone that I talk to, the first thing that I say to your point, Jake, is like, or, or the first thing I try to understand is do you need this? Like, is this something you actually need? Because if not, if we connect and I, we just talked for a whole like half an hour and then I find out at the end, you don't need this. I'm not going to try to sell it to you because, you know, like, you know, and, and then we waste, I wasted 30 minutes and like, you know, you, you guys know for our jobs, it's like, it's a lot of volume. You've got to do it a lot. Um, and so, you know, I, I think the first thing I try to figure out is, is this going to be a waste of my time? And then I make those connection points later on of like, you know, as we're trying to figure out like what it is, what it is that your student athlete is trying to accomplish going to college. Like what majors are they thinking about? What sport are they playing? And how serious are they? And then that's kind of the conversation. And typically it's an easier conversation because parents love talking about their kids, <laughs> you know, and so yeah. like get them talking about their kids and it becomes very fun and that's at least the joy I found of this particular sales job is like, I'm talking about sports. I love doing that. And, um, and then find the connection after like, Hey, is this something you need? So that's at least the first thing that I thought of when you, when you kind of were uh, posing that question, I guess for you, AJ, 
is it a similar thing? Because you got you have a, again a different industry, so you're you're in um, sort of healthcare. What does that look like for you, or, or for for you, AJ? When when is it? Do you feel like you're connecting, or or do you even have the same process? Well, let me first and say, like, <clears throat> I love how direct you are. I think in general, I think in anything that we do, here here's who I am. Here's what I do. Here's how I can help you. Mm -hmm. You know, and maybe not that blunt, like you're going to, you know, maybe throw a softball up to a Midwestern person. Sure. <laughs> uh, you, you're going to have to throw a high heat to someone from New Jersey and from yep. California. You you slowly kind of get to that, as Jake was saying. So mm -hmm. I think, Alex, like that is a you know, great way to not only like be direct with someone, but being direct with yourself, you know, mm -hmm. like giving yourself the credibility of who you are, because at the end of the day, like you know, hopefully, and that's kind of what, what my answer would be is someone you believe in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, maybe if it's not, you know, your first love, uh, Alex, like you said, you're, you're mm -hmm. kind of in the, this beautiful, um, you know, connection in between a professional job and, you know, sports and mm -hmm. that could lead you even further. So, yeah, I mean, I've been a part of really all sorts of industries, healthcare, starting out, um, professional services like Jake. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, human capital management. So I've dealt with all different small businesses in, in New Jersey, and a vast of my, my experience comes with manufacturing and industrial companies. So kind of mm -hmm. all different walks of life. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting how I kind of realized that maybe it was time for me to go back to my former job was I had to make a pitch on, you know, getting my last job. And I had to kind of give like maybe two reasons or, or something like that. And I said, you know, my, my best quality is my ability to connect with people mm -hmm. and the, to partner, you know, to partner with that is, you know, my passion for life. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can kind of understand when I'm working with someone, you can kind of understand this passion that I'm coming with. And it's not necessarily up in your face of, hey, this is great. If you don't do this, you're a loser. God, that doesn't really get you far. At least right. it doesn't for me because it's not genuine. Mm -hmm. um, but I have this ability to connect with people. I mean, I do. I mean, so do you guys. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've, I've been, a, um, whether it's, you know, good or bad, been a part of many experiences, uh, whether it's uh, in school, outside of school, and, you know, on, on the sports fields, uh, in this, you know, industry of mental health. You know, I've been able to talk to a lot of people and how I sell is really to kind of communicate, you know, through stories of working with people. And if I'm working with a small business, I can relate to some other ones that I've worked with in the past or the fact that my parents are two bi uh, small business owners. And mm -hmm. I realized that, you know, what kind of stress it is to take on multiple things at once and wearing multiple different hats. I've seen it firsthand. And then when you start to talk like that, that passion just comes right in and, and, and kind of just coats the whole conversation of, hey, that not only does this guy, this guy, sure, sure, he's trying to sell me something, no doubt. My my job is to make money, but so is yours. Mm -hmm. So, and for Alex, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you know, my job is to, you know, get, get sell you guys programs, mm -hmm. but your job is to get your kid into the best college spot, best as possible. Right. Jake, you know, you mm -hmm. guys have jobs. I can help you fill those jobs. Plain mm -hmm. and simple. I mean, we're not, you know, we're, we're not idiots here. We're all here to make money and eventually in, in a certain way. But if you can like find the way to just connect in uh, regardless of the industry, right? In, in healthcare, as Alex mentioned, man, you got to do a lot of smoozing of the people that answer the phone. Like, yeah. I've made a lot of doctors write a lot of different scripts and I have never spoken one word to them, but I've spoken with their nurse, their practitioners, mm -hmm. um, you know, different people that, were kind of, you know, influencers, not necessarily decision makers, but, um, you know, kind of making sure that everyone was being felt in that conversation. So just kind of coming from all these different industries, as Alex said, like, I mean, being direct is mm -hmm. important and kind of being true to yourself helps too, because that's where yeah. you'll find, mm -hmm. hey, who is the best me within this role? I have to be that person. If I can't be that person, then I need to, you know, leave. And, you know, to the topic mm -hmm. at hand, stress is going to come at you any different level, whether you're a business owner, salesperson, you're in client services, or, or you're just working, you know, in retail. But to answer that question, like, are you the best person within this role? Um, if you're not, 
and you're not being your best self, the stress will just pile up, pile up, pile up. Mm. You'll kind of question why you're doing that. And then the opposite of commission breath, where it's like, hey, I need to make sales and need to make money. Right. You kind of be like, man, this guy doesn't really sound very convincing or, you know, I don't even believe in him. Does he believe in himself? Yeah. So I kind think, of a wide answer for you, Alex, but that's yeah. kind of where I went. Love yeah. It. yeah. I, and I, as you guys were both talking there, I, I was thinking, I mean, we started with the idea of like, Alex, you're, you're in an industry that, you know, you like and have passion for. And we've talked about that. I, I find uh, where I get my peace of mind is that, I, I have something, I'm in an industry and in, where it's important and mm -hmm. I feel it is a necessary thing that people do need. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of my, that when things are going their best, it's when you're prepared and you're ready and you know beforehand that person, what they need, what they do, and, and you know what you do and how you can help them. Mm -hmm. I think when whenever anyone goes to the, the table with nothing to offer, I think that's when, and again, it's like you're saying, Alex, you're, you're adding value, right? Like, mm -hmm. and I think you have to go through those steps ahead of time. I mean, for me, I, I'm doing staffing and then also doing different, um, did you get a thumbs up? Did I get a thumbs up right there? Was that uh, a, Yeah, a, a I don't know how it happens, but well, that's great, uh, thumbs though. up, Look thumbs at us. I mean, I, <laughs> The live audience loves you. Yeah. <laughs> but I was just saying, they. I think the industry I'm in, in being in technology, uh, staffing for those roles, software developers, help desk people, it goes across a different types of industries, but it's right. always the technology groups in those industries. Mm -hmm. So it is, a, and those are important things. Like a lot of times we are brought in for different projects, implementation, those types of things for I mean, on a, an example recently was, you know, there was a cybersecurity breach and it mm. was a school district and it's, you know, sensitive information that got breached and, and we had to bring in people to help build out their cybersecurity, one, to respond to that problem and then two, to have something built so that they can prevent this in the future. Mm. Um, so like, those are really important things and it keeps me involved with the news as well. I like mm -hmm. that it's dynamic. I, I do. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys feel this way, but in sales, I like that I'm not doing the same thing every day. Like, mm -hmm. I, I mean, what I'm doing is the same, but who I'm interacting with is always different. Right. And I'm always trying to figure out something different. It's not as if I'm like manual labor where I have to do this thing into like a project until it's done. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like I'm a part of a team. I do this part and I'm on to the next one. I'm mm -hmm. on to the next one. And I'm constant. And I do like that a lot in sales generally, where it's like you get to move and and be pretty dynamic throughout the day, weeks, and months, versus like seeing a singular thing all the way through mm -hmm. and doing things in that manner. Mm -hmm. Um but I will say too, the the other thing that's been interesting with my early career here has been I started in startups mm -hmm. where they were launching and they had, it was me and like 15 people. And that was the company. And mm -hmm. all of us are wearing a ton of different hats. We're doing operations. We're doing marketing. We're doing sales. We're doing delivery. Mm -hmm. And then I went from that to a, like a Fortune 500 company where I have this lane <laughs> and I in this lane. And mm -hmm. so... um I'm curious where you guys land on that. Like, do you guys have pretty good autonomy, autonomy in being able to do whatever you want to do in your strategies? Or do you think in your companies, are you guys more like, okay, I'm being told I have to do this particular thing or whatever? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, um, I love this. I work for NCSA, Next College Student Athlete, and they have been around for about 22-ish years. So bigger company because they were bought by Endeavor uh, and then sold again and also merged with IMG Academy. So all of that to say that there is a lot of um, like company growth um, priority. Like there's a lot of uh, growing the employee and hiring from within um, that they put a lot of value on. So developing uh, the, the employees, us. And so what I've loved about it is a lot of e-learnings and like certificate opportunities 
you talked about being like in touch with the news, what's current, um, have like da- like daily um, news feed, like internal company news, but then external um, college landscape, basically. So, you know, the, the NCAA changes, NIL, there's a lot of information coming around, um, the, you know, a couple months ago with the NIL and everything. So that's great to kind of keep a pulse in. And then I, I've just been uh, quite happy with the fact, like the reason I, I chose this, quite frankly, is like, you know, we're transitioning from like doing uh, events and doing stand up and their entertainment in that capacity. And then this job, I really, really fell in love with because a lot of their um, them selling the job was like a lot of these uh, people that started here. We train them to then go on to companies within sports. Here are all of basically the testimonials of the um, former employees at your position that you're, you're at now that work for the 49ers, that work for the, the San Diego Chargers, well, now the <laughs> Los Angeles Chargers. But um, but like there's a lot of like growing and then also like, hey, clearly you're not going to do you're not going to do this forever. We know that. And they train you to to either move up in the company or move on after that. And so I've loved that a lot because just as a person, at whatever job you do, I think it's incredibly important to um to, to work on yourself as much as you're working on your job, right? Because then your job becomes easier because you become stronger and you become just a, you know, life doesn't get easier, but you just get better at dealing with it. You know, like th- like th- that sort of mantra or that type of perspective, I think is sort of ingrained in the, at least this company. And so I've enjoyed a lot of the, um, the trainings because I have like LinkedIn learning certificates and stuff that they'll be like, hey, here are the stuff. And then, a lot of team powwows um, of team trainings. Let's listen to some calls. How's it going for you? And um, and and just growing basically. And if you're doing great, you can do you can be more hands off if you'd like. You you can have that more autonomy to like grow your own business. Is kind of what how they sort of at least talk about it in in our company. Um, and you know just to try to empower the the us employees to take more initiative and to teach the other people so that you can be ready for a manager spot if that's what you want to do or just the leadership role in general. So, um, yeah, I, I think no matter where you are, those types of learnings are like just so, so important. And like specifically for sales, that's, it's all about information. You got to know who you're talking to the landscape and the market of whatever the product is. And, who is, who is the competition? So it's all like an information war, I feel like. Um, but, but yeah, I don't know. Um, that's at least, at least my perspective from, I, I've been working there for, you know, almost a year. So at least from the beginning standpoint, that's at least what I'm seeing from my perspective, you know? Yeah, that's cool. I like the LinkedIn learning. I just wrote that down. That's great. I'm oh, sure there's a bunch of them in so many yeah. different categories. You'll love the Excel one, Jake. <laughs> I probably won't. You'd be like, I already know all this crap. <laughs> <laughs> That's an underrated, uh, you know, what, what do we call it? Not feature, but benefit that people don't think of. It's like, hey, what is your company doing to invest in you? Yeah. And even if it's just like, for instance, there's a bunch of like sales software and whatnot. I mean, that stuff costs money. Mm-hmm. And if, it, you know, it's it's not probably like, you know, person that's using the software, like, oh, whatever, it's just another thing. But it's like, all right, what are they doing to invest in me and better me? And sometimes it might not be much. And you got to have that, you know, honest conversation of like, is this the best place for me? Or maybe just kind of having a reality check that, hey, listen, you know, it's not perfect everywhere. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they're doing this for me, like Alex has their certifications, or we're having these types of conversations uh, about growth and personal growth, like that's great. Um. I think just a point like you guys both said it, you know, like finding that small piece of passion, right? And I, I think literally my first sales job. Now I was a recruiter for mm-hmm. for a few months, um, but my first sales job was in you know like pharmaceutical sales. We would sell the medicine that went into um, you know a, a, a powder that went into a medicine that you put into your new med rinse, and people that had sinus surgeries would rinse out their nose, um, yada yada this that that this. So I would always tell people, it's not the neti pot. Neti pot's old. It's like a rinse that's actually stronger. And, you know, there's 
you know, steroids and, you know, different antibiotics and fungals that go into it. But like, I come to realize that like 8% of the population has these types of chronic sinus surgeries and these chronic sinusitis, which is basically a sinus infection for more than six months, which sounds just terrible. Yeah. And like, it's hard to breathe this, that, that, this. So, you know, you hang your hat if you need to, you got to find your something, you know, find something to hang your hat on. Right. And I was hanging the hat as you guys both were saying in your own terms of like, Hey, I'm helping someone. Mm -hmm. You know, at the end of the day, this is helping someone. And yeah. um, when you can tap into that bigger purpose, um, d do you have a giant role in it? You may or you may not. But in regards to like that bigger picture and helping you kind of muscle through the different types of stress that comes with a job, it certainly makes things easier when you have a big picture that you can hang your hat on. And mm -hmm. I can hear from both of you that, you know, you, you both have that, whether it's mm -hmm. the last place you guys will ever professionally work or the first, um, mm -hmm. you're finding that that purpose and in and, and your work, which I think without it, it's a candle that's just going to, you know, go yeah. up, you know, unlit sooner rather than later. Yeah. Yeah. And I, it's interesting. It's like the pursuit of finding it is is kind of like. Uh, that's what I hang my hat on is is the pursuit of finding what my purpose is, right? Like for, it's it's different for each company on on what I can help them with and how I can help them. And so for me, it's like a much I like the idea of it being very discovery based. Um, and Alex, you mentioned I just want to double back really quickly on, on skills, and then AJ mentioned it too, where you know sometimes if your company has a software or something. You know, you can learn that. And I see that all the time with the contractors that we have. We also have loan staff, similar mm -hmm. to like Lloyd or a consulting group. Um, and a lot of them do it because we get that question all the time. People are like, why are they contractors? If they were good, wouldn't they just be a permanent employee? And it's like some of them are like really strategic in like, oh, if I want to learn and develop and help this particular software, I, I don't want to pay for it. I, I, ha I have to go to a company that has this software, get good, learn the modules, learn how to improve it and then implement it. And then I can take that to another company because it's such a rare software or rare whatever the skill is, then they can then take that. So you see that with contractors a lot where – Part of the reason is like they're just picking up value, like their resume. And like, I'm obviously I'm looking at like resumes and, and giving out different resumes to people all day, every day. And the things that differentiate are some of the skills you're talking about, Alex, like getting mm -hmm. a certification, huge, mm -hmm. right? Like being able to have something that you're like, okay, this is a verified third party. It's not me just saying something. It's, right. it's a third party that has validated my learning. And I can express that to you. And those things are huge. Um, it's it's really big in like different type of like computer languages. So like Python, mm -hmm. Java, or SQL, yep. doing those those big C++. data. Plus. Like, yeah. Yeah. All those things like you, you need some. And all those companies will offer their certifications for it. Salesforce has the, an entire built thing that's built out. Um, and so it, it is interesting. It's like. I think about that all the time. Like what value are you adding? Like for mm -hmm. instance, um, Lisa just started with USC and the fact that she can get potentially free education, right? Yeah. Or, you know, master's degree or kids, yep. you know, like that's a huge thing. Oh, looks like you cut off. Yeah. I think we lost you there, Jake, but I well, should be back in a second. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Oh, yes. we can hear can you hear just you? fine. Yeah. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. I never lost. We're talking it. about yeah. free education, masters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So free education. So we're moving abroad. No. Um, <laughs> we, <laughs> we, uh, so I mean, like those are just other creative benefits of you know improving yourself that companies offer that I don't think people think about all the time. I think it's just mm -hmm. a good example of what you guys are both talking about is like you, you know adding value to yourself to then take you know your better self as long as you can validate it mm -hmm. with these certifications and these other things or your sales metrics or earnings, mm -hmm. you know, whatever those things are, 
then I think that's when, if you go somewhere else, you can then earn, you know, more money or more prestige or within your company, a promotion, you know, like those things happen by bettering yourself and then proving that you've bettered yourself. Yeah. Um, and I think those are really all, I just came to my head as you, you guys are both chatting about it. And, you know, mm -hmm. I think it, those types of self-improvement things can come in a bunch of different ways. Even yeah. this podcast is a great thing to be like, I'm really interested in my job. I'm talking about it on a Sunday, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, you know, it, it's, it's a validating thing. Yeah. It's ironic because you, you were mentioning it before we launched, but I had a manager one time that said, Hey, like do some extra work, read a sales book, read, you know, listen to yeah. a podcast, like read some mm -hmm. articles and he would send stuff our way. And, um, yeah, it is a it is a good point, right? You know, you're either you're getting either getting better or you're getting worse. And um you really have to kind of look yourself in the mirror and make that, you know, judgment mm -hmm. every day, whether it's work or, or not not. And um I think just in general, trying to improve upon, you know, the past day is just really beneficial. But mm -hmm. at the same time, right, and I think you guys can both attest to this, you can only make so many uh, leaps and bounds in one day and sometimes yeah. you know mm -hmm. in order to you know mm -hmm. build a house it's one brick at a time in order to eat an elephant it's one bite at a time so mm -hmm. also yeah. have some patience with yourself and you know realize that i just need to put a really good day together or i just need to mm -hmm. start a new routine and and i time block like a madman at work and mm -hmm. i try to stay you know as best as i can and i'm you know tomorrow i'm gonna probably have 400 emails because i've been out for a week but I need, I know I need to readjust my schedule going into June and mm -hmm. try to finish out this, this month in a different form. And mm -hmm. I'm going to do that via, via time blocking, but I, there's nothing I can do until tomorrow at eight o'clock. And right. then I'm going to put in the best day. I'm going to try to set the guardrails for a really good week. And that week's going to turn into a couple of good weeks and a couple of months. And then we'll see where, where it goes. Mm -hmm. um, Love you, know, that. you can't just plant yeah. seeds and expect it to be, you know, James and a giant beanstalk. Right. Yeah. yeah you got to water them. Yeah. You got to water them after you plant them. Right. Like you have to stay on top of it. I like the, I, I'm curious about time. Like I'd like to uh, get into time blocking and that strategy um, because mm -hmm. I, I, I do, um, I don't have to do this. This is just something that I do. My company doesn't ask me to do this. I log all of my, I, I'm, I'm logging all of my calls and I am making notes throughout the day. And, um, and so I have that every day basically like a journal and I have my goals top right, uh, like sales goals, expectation, but then also like higher kind of commission base. And so at least for me, I know we talked about, we kind of wanted to get into the stress as well. I know for me, if I'm aiming really high and I'm setting really high goals and I fail short of that, I'm at least, I, I've shot it so high that when I fail, I'm still hitting my expectation with the company. And I'm not falling below quota, you know, like, and so that type of like individual like notes have, has left me, I think maybe a little less stressed than if I was shooting for the expectation and then falling short. And then I'm in bad standing with the company, you know, um, where my failure is that I'm still, uh, you know, in good standing with the company. I'm hitting all my, my marks and everything. Um, that's why I'm curious about your, um, your 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 block timing and at least that strategy we have like at least one uh i like mantra it's great because it rhymes uh but it's like clock in lock in and then clock out lock out like compartmentalize your life so that you're not like getting burnt out you know like once you're, yeah. you're done clock out don't think about this job they're like hey guys i think they're saying like maybe it's july 4th or some other holiday where they're like hey it's on a tuesday guys if you're using your PTO, make that a four day weekend, right? Get that, get that middle day just so that like, you know, it's going to be a slower day for us anyway, but like, take care of yourself, like take mm -hmm. care of yourself first. Cause then you'll be a better, you'll be better when you clock in, you're locked in, you're just thinking about it. And I think that there's less like energy switching back and forth to being distracted or to being not locked in, you know what I mean? And so that's, that makes me think of maybe the time blocking. That's kind of why I wanted to, to get back to you, AJ, is like, is, is that what that practice is? Or kind of what is that, I guess, the time blocking for you? 
Well, I could definitely comment on it, but Jake, did you have something? I don't, I don't want to yeah, go off it, on a tangent it, if you had something. It goes on to the time blocking. Oh, did man. I? Oh, no. I think <laughs> I might have froze again. Oh, here we are. Okay, All you're back. You're back. Just you're back. A little bit. Did I freeze? Did I freeze? You did. Yeah. You're I, back. I identified. I knew. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, as you, as you were talking about, Alex, I know you, you're taught time blocking. I love as well. I know you're both chatting about this. And um, for for me, I, I think that's really big. And the other part where you touched on it, Alex, is, you know, coming mentally and like, you know, just physically ready for the day and mm -hmm. what you're going to do. Um, I mean, we talked about this off the pod right before is something I want to get into is like the stress with the job. For me, I I found it it crept up because I changed from who was managing me and my routines ended up changing. Mm -hmm. So I was going to a different office. I was I was different metrics I had to hit. And so I didn't adjust my routines really. And I wasn't really like ready didn't address for the, what I was doing. Mark in it. He didn't and address. might have frozen wait, wait, again. Jake, yeah, yeah. You froze. But you said uh, <laughs> you changed managers. And then the bookmark yeah. where you dropped off was um, uh, because you were changing managers. So you, your routines, routines changed. Yeah. yeah, my routines changed. And I don't think I identified it quickly enough where I wasn't like working out at the same times. I wasn't eating dinner or like eating meals at the same times. And it, it, it mess, it mess with just like, and it's so subtle. It's such a subtle thing. Um, mm -hmm. But those things made it more difficult to do what I was doing. And then also it's like, whenever there's a new routine, it just takes more mental capacity to figure out what that is. And just to like consciously think about it versus like a routine you have where you're like, you're just, you're thinking about the next thing. You're, mm -hmm. you're on to the net. You're just doing whatever it is. And you're mm -hmm. on to the, the thing that matters to put your mind and energy towards. So um, it, a lot of the stress I had was around not effectively changing my time blocking and, mm -hmm. and what I had to do and, and when I was, what the expectations were too. Mm -hmm. uh, but go, AJ, sorry about that. Go ahead into um, no, you're, your, you're all good. Yeah, I think that's awesome. It yeah, adds to what I was going to yeah. say too. Mm -hmm. So honestly, like to toot my own horn on the build, balance, thrive model, I kind of reference that quite a bit and it will be more in the future. But if you think about it, I personally believe foundation is everything, right? If we were to build a house of cards, right? It's only going to go as far as the base lets it. Mm -hmm. Now, House of Cards is also pretty thin, so we got to make sure it's sturdy. So when I think of time blocking, I, I realize that that's one way, right? Time blocking is an action that can set up my routines. Mm -hmm. And if done over time, routines can turn into habits. Mm -hmm. So I time block quite a bit on my work, um, as well as my um, personal calendar. Believe it mm -hmm. or not, just before we got on, <clears throat> and here's another thing, the balance part, right? That's the build of the build, balance, thrive. Mm -hmm. The balance part, I believe life for me, and I, I've talked with many other people that agree, and I believe this to be in sales as well. Many people agree, many people don't. Life is sprint intervals. When can you take that sprint? When can you work your tail off? Yeah. Like mm -hmm. Alex said, right? Mm -hmm. Boom. I can yeah. see it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when can you sprint and then when can you take it off? Mm -hmm. And kind of unpack that a little bit more. It's a perfect balance between mental toughness and your self-compassion. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have the self-compassion to take that day off? Because mm -hmm. not only do you need the rest, but mm -hmm. four day week, like Alex said, you know, sure, it's going to be enjoyable, but like I need the rest. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm just going to go into after that, I mean, I was off for a whole week. I woke up that Friday with two hours of sleep. I said, mm -hmm. I'm taking off. This isn't enough sleep for me. I have to wake up at 4 a.m. to drive 10 hours. I'm not doing this. I need to go back to bed. I need to, I need to relax today. And that's kind of the like the sprint interval-esque. Mm -hmm. But with these time box, right? Like that you talk about foundation, like, hey, I'm not selling much, I'm not doing much. Okay, what are you saying? Who mm -hmm. are you calling? When mm -hmm. are you calling? 
How yep. long are you saying certain things? You know, we've got to go back to the foundation. So if, if you start at the bare minimum of blocking off your time and be like, hey, I'm only going to make cold calls from here to here. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm going to do it or I'm going to call until I get a meeting. This is what it's going to be like. I'm going to have a break right here every single day, 12 to 1. Mm -hmm. And if it's not, I'm going to, I'm going to, if, if there's a meeting at 12, I'm going to move it to 1, 1 30. I'm going to make sure there's time blocked off for my break. Mm -hmm. And that's legitimately like how my whole life is. Now, sometimes my calendar looks ridiculous. So if it's a full habit, like I go walk after work with Rover, mm -hmm. I do a meditation via calm and then I read. So that's the five to six time frame. Mm -hmm. It's off my calendar because I, I'm already kind of used to it. But the whole writing thing, I was writing so much, so much, so much, so much. And then I'm like, I need to take a break. You know, it's emotionally, it's a lot. I'm trying to write an hour before work. So I started to get up earlier. I started working out at five o'clock at the gym, three mm -hmm. days of the week, hitting a spin class. And now I knew because I was going to take my break, right? Sprint interval. It was, you know, kind of the unsprint part. Tomorrow, I'm getting up, I'm going to the gym, and at 6.30 when I'm done my workout and I'm showered, instead of driving home, I'm going to sit down in the cafe and I'm going to write for an hour and I'm going to come home like it's a commute. And I'll mm -hmm. do that for three times a week. But I put it on my calendar so it's a commitment, mm -hmm. right? So that routine can turn into a habit. And not only just turns it, it turns into results, right? Like mm -hmm. you're writing down, Alex, all these things to go on, right? Mm -hmm. It's just a broader way to kind of write down of like, hey, I put in seven hours of phone mm -hmm. calls. Maybe I need to put in 14. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of quantify that. You can look back and you can quantify different things that are like that. And I think yeah. it's all across, you know, your your life, not just with sales, but yeah. it really starts with that foundation, right? The build. Mm -hmm. And then you got to balance. And then once you got the balance humming, then you can really start to thrive and perform, get into flow state, whether it's within work, outside of work, mm -hmm. and, and other things like that. So I truly, 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 truly believe in that. I mean, there's really not anyone that can talk me outside of a foundation is the first place where you should start. Mm -hmm. I love a lot of a lot of what you're saying, uh, if not all of it. And I think one of the big things that I've realized that has, has made me better is not just planning my days, but my weeks and months. <laughs> That's good. Oh, yeah. As I cut out again. Yep. As I cut out, but I. Yep. And I'm the really, one thing that made you better. Yeah, that was really better. good. <laughs> is um is not not just planning my days, but also weeks, months, year. Mm -hmm. I think when you do that, it takes a lot of stress off of the urgency mm. of having to finish it immediately. Let's give it a second. And I'm back. And I'm back. Can you hear he'll me? He'll be back. Dang After the break, it. what are you going to say? He'll, he'll chime in when he's here. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 there you go. I mean, I think I kind of get what you were saying, Jake. You you had cut out right when you were. Um, when you plan out year. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Month, days, years. Yep. I was just going to say that those things, being able to have that, it, it takes a little bit of the mental burden off of the urgency of needing x to be done today and then you know raking yourself over the coals when you don't get it done because you're like well look i can still hit this thing for the week i can mm -hmm. still hit the amount that i need for the month i could still hit what i need for the year and i think that takes a lot of stress off because you're like oh i just i gotta hammer it the rest of the week here i just mm -hmm. gotta i gotta i gotta add a couple more calls you know sprinkled in throughout the, the rest of this week because I didn't hit this or, or, you know, those types of examples where it still gets done because you give yourself the grace in those different time blocks over different periods of time. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that really helps too. And it's, I always heard it's something like everyone overestimates what they can do in a day and they underestimate what they can do in a year. Mm -hmm. um, That's and awesome. I, I think it's really, it's really true. And I think it's because people don't realize the power of like small activities over the course of time through consistency and mm -hmm. the compound growth that has. Um, yeah. And yeah. I think that kind of absolutely. Explains. Yeah. Yeah. As we'll be right back after the break. <laughs> <laughs> I think one, one thing to, you know, really speak to that is 
not a lot of people think like a scientist or reverse engineer, you know, certain things. Mm -hmm. Hey, I want to make, you know, a hundred thousand dollars in sales this year. Okay. Well, how do you do that? How, how many sales would that be? How much, mm -hmm. how, what's your average sale? What's your, what do you want to do this? And you could even like kind of think about, you know, for instance, myself, like with this whole thing, like the climb, right? There's a reason why I'm doing a podcast. I'm also writing a book, but there's also many different things that I have that are step-by-step -step to get me to be a motivational speaker mm -hmm. at the best level. But I had to reverse engineer it and kind of think of different ways of doing it. Now, granted, I'm fulfilled anyway, however it comes, but I want to prepare as best as I possibly can to go as large and far as I can. And not, not, not many people think about, hey, how do I get there? What, what do I have to, what are all the small steps as like Jake said? And, and that's the other part of like being like, thinking like a scientist, think about the other side of it, right? Mm -hmm. Think about other sides, other perspectives, Hey, what's this person doing that I'm not doing? What do I, what do, I need to be honest with myself. What am I doing that's not getting the job done? Mm -hmm. What, who do I have to listen? I mean, fortunate for, we talk about technology. We have technologies in my, my company where I can listen to calls of other people. Mm -hmm. And I've done that and I've strategically changed how I'm opening calls and trying to set up calls to go in a certain direction, right? I want to, I want to, you know, make, make a huge sale, not just mm -hmm. like a small sale and set it up the right way. And, you know, looked at it, did it, made it happen and mm -hmm. have more deals in the pipeline that are larger because of that. So I think, you know, kind of reverting back to the stress of it, right. And get super stressful on anyone if they're not quote unquote performing. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it can go back to what Jake said, these small actions. What are these small actions? Alex, what are you doing? You're writing all these things down. Like, Mm -hmm. look at your foundation, right? Mm -hmm. Swipe it, swipe it clean. There was a very successful district uh, vice president that I used to work under. And he had a saying, it was called, um, I believe, actually, I'm forgetting it now, but I believe it was called build, um, build up to speed. No, break down to speed up. So mm -hmm. essentially like break down everything or, or slow down to speed up. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. So like, Take a few days, slow the slow the freak down, figure mm -hmm. it out, mm -hmm. and then then you go. And I think a lot of people are just kind of spinning the wheels, and the stress only gets harder and harder. And like Jake mentioned, you know, like mm -hmm. one of my routines outside of work, it's like, oh, we need to slow down. You know, maybe yeah. that means I need to take a whole freaking personal day and make sure that I'm good, that mm -hmm. everything's good outside of work, so I can do everything outside of here. And that's that self-compassion piece of the balance. That's something I did not have and the stress from my work, especially my third hospitalization, played a huge, huge role mm -hmm. over, over time, just dealing with stress, 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 stress. And granted, I was so mentally tough to get through situations, get myself in a different workplace, but the compound of stress already did its damage. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have one ounce of self-compassion. I didn't know, mm -hmm. like, hey, I need to take a break or in all honesty too, I wasn't able to look myself in the mirror being like, I'm the problem, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and I think some people might need to do that when it comes to performance based jobs or, Hey, like, this is just how it is. This is the cold, hard truth. I need to do better. Or, Hey, this is how they want it done. Doesn't matter what I want. Like I have to do this or I need to find another job. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm curious to see like how you guys analyze stress, you know, coming on, you know, to your current roles or past roles that you had and, and, you know, maybe things that you're trying to do or what have done in the past to kind of alleviate that. Yeah. I mean, a lot of what we talked about, like what you guys are kind of hitting on here is like, you know, what are the routines that, um, what are the routines around your, your work that make you prepared for work? Um, you know, I, I know you had um, Frank on, you guys talked about uh, dogs and, and sort of the, the effect a dog can have on you or a pet in mm -hmm. general. Um, for me, I, I know that it's a great start to my day when my dog kind of like just comes over to the bed, wakes me up, and then I have to take her for a walk. I have to walk, get sunlight first thing in the morning and do that. Like that's a great sort of routine that I have. Um, and it's an indication of my stress, like like you're asking about here, like, it's an indication of my stress when I really don't want to do that. Like, why is it? Did I not get enough sleep? Uh, am I 
am I um, at capacity with my level of what I can handle right now? You know, like, am I, because if I can't, you know, take like a puppy dog on a walk in the morning, uh, there's other things going on, right? That like, so that's at least one indication that I, I have. And there's uh, always a, at least in sales, there's like a competitive like if you're if you're part of a bigger group um, or a bigger company, you mentioned um, the other sales calls that you can kind of tap into and use. I'm not sure if you guys have like a leaderboard or or what that looks like for your company, but like at least for me, I, I know that like I look at it. Um, it's like once a week rather than every single day because when I first started, it was every single day and. There's way too much up and down. I found myself getting way too stressed out because I had one bad day rather than being like, look, by the end of the month, I'm, I'm looking at um, a shout out a coworker of mine. His name is Chase. Like Chase was always doing really well, but he started off poorly. I didn't notice him in the beginning, but then by the end of the month, lo and behold, Chase was always doing well. And so at least for me, how did I handle that? Reached out to him, started talking to him like online in our internal teams chat and like, Hey, what is it that you're doing? How are you preparing? Um, I see your numbers in this area are great. Like what, what's, well, talk me through what it is that you think about when you're doing this. And, and that's, I think another way in a more direct way that you can get those learnings. So not necessarily a certificate or LinkedIn learning, but like you have a network of everybody at your company, use that network, like reach out to them. And I think people are more willing to help then I think we all give credit for we like, at least for me, I always think like, I don't want to be maybe a burden to that person or take up too much of their time. Um, and so it took me personal growth to get over that and be like, like, Hey, what's up? Like, how do you get better at this? And, and ask and not feel like I am uh, wasting their time. And I've found overwhelmingly people are like excited to help, especially when I'm like, you are crushing it. Like I really butter them up. Like you are crushing it. You are really doing well. Like, and so that, that's a great way to just connect with, with coworkers and me coworkers and, um, and have that personal growth and deal with the stress that you're kind of asking about there, AJ. Like, like when somebody else is going through it, they know. And they're like, dude, don't worry about it. Like, cause you, yeah. I found myself spiraling. If I'm like, it's just me, I'm the problem. Oh yeah. my gosh, what am I going to do? much easier yeah. to get over it when somebody else that is succeeding currently is like, Oh yeah, that happened to me last week, you know, or, or whatever the thing is. So yeah. Uh, couple, yeah. couple mm -hmm. things there too. I mean, it's like a common theme of action rather than inaction. Yeah. Um, and the inaction is just kind of ruminating in your own thoughts and checking, you know, like those leaderboards. And uh, it's actually funny that you said that, you know, yeah, I haven't. And most people would 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 talk to me. It's actually a common misconception that people wouldn't want to say. Actually, people love to talk about themselves, especially yeah. if they're doing doing yeah. well. Yeah. So so I think even if you're not in sales to reach out, I think that's so important, actually, just in professional networking. A lot of people reach out like when it's clear you need something. Right. And rather than like, hey, I, yeah, like I would actually want to hear from you about your experience, you know, in this industry, rather mm -hmm. than be like, Hey, you got a referral? Like, mm -hmm. can I get in? You know, that kind of thing. Right. Um, get me a job. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. I, um, unfortunately it keeps cutting out for me. So I'm catching most of what you guys are saying, but um, <laughs> what, what, um, I did hear, I mean, reaching out to some people within your, your teams and stuff. And I, mm -hmm. I've done that a couple of times. I found that the people that were performing best and to AJ's point, like I didn't just go like, Hey, like what companies are you working with? Like, what are you doing? Like, it was more of like, I identified them. <laughs> and then Tough this, you cut out this again. episode is brought to you by Bucky's. <laughs> <laughs> Did it cut out again? Yeah. Yep. yep. Just a bit. What's your what's your what's your what's your go to thing to do, Jake? In five words or less, when you're feeling all stressed, and I think you're frozen right now, so I'll keep all bustering. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Okay. What's my favorite? What? <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, let's talk about. Let's get your like five five words or less. Like 
or a quick sentence, what are you doing? Like if you're feeling stressed, like professionally at work? Mm -hmm. Well, always exercise. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I find it's a little hokey, but like mind and body are, you know, attached type of thing. And I, I think when I'm not like one of the best things I can do is go for a run. Before we give it a try. Rest. We give it a try. <laughs> hey, okay. so let me ask you this. Sure. Are you going on a walk at the beginning of the day, getting sunshine? Or is that something that you like, hey, it's been a lot. I need to take a, take a walk in the middle of the day well, or something like that. Yeah. The, so the, the, I have two, two walks. One is conditional. The other one is mandatory. The mandatory one is uh, with the dog, right? Got to take the dog for a walk. You go to the bathroom, mm -hmm. uh, get her sniffs on and, and sniff everything in the neighborhood. Um, and then the second walk is lunch. That's the one where if I'm really not focused, like I'm struggling uh, to make those calls, I just uh, luckily have a park nearby and that's my, my, it's my lunch kind of period where I will go for a walk through the park, maybe put in a podcast, maybe not. Um, and that is my like decompression walk basically. Cause the first one's just kind of quick around the neighborhood um, with the dog. The, the, that second one through the park, it's much longer. Um, and you know, it's, it's much more for myself to de-stress. I walk by, a lovely walk i walk by um uh like soccer fields baseball fields tennis field like courts and stuff so I watch people playing all these sports and stuff and um and also like youth soccer events and youth baseball and stuff and that's what i work in you know it's like i work in um helping connect to families trying to get their kids to go to college and so um i found just trying to get like a reset doing that I was finding in my day-to-day -day life what it was that I was stressed about. And it helped me reconnect with the families as well. If I had a really mean family, I would kind of go on this walk and be like, oh, look, look at all these regular, like these great regular families and, um, and people that are not, you know, mean and um, just, uh, I guess, misconceiving what it, why I'm calling basically is really typically the, the worst calls. And I say mean because, I work. I know. I don't know where we're at with time, but I wanted to get to some of our war stories, guys. I want to hear some oh. of the worst, uh, or maybe some fun stories, or maybe just some unique strategies you guys had about dealing with tougher calls. Um, just because you know, I go for a walk after one. You know, that's at least what I would do after a tough one. And uh, I can start if you guys need some time to think about it. Because uh, I well, have. Let's give, let's give Jerry Bone the five, five words or less. <laughs> what do you do? Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's uh, gone. Oh, wait. No, yeah, he's back. He's back. <laughs> uh, I've had a. I don't know if there's any one particular thing, but the thing that's like the worst is just like, who are you? How did you get my number? Like, Fuck off, basically, <laughs> like the gist of like the worst, you know, like that's the worst my job gets is like the what the fuck? Like, mm -hmm. how did you get this number is um, is usually one and trying to be like, look, I did all this research. I think we can help you. I don't know if you need it or not, but do you? And they're just kind of th those are the uh, the worst calls. And I think that's how I try and deal with it is being like. I thought I could help. If not, no worries. Fuck me. <laughs> so that's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Alex, I'm curious about like your worst calls considering uh, you're dealing with like parents. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, some of them, um, I, I guess the one, the first thing that comes to mind at least uh, is there is uh, a person that I guess they had, I had gotten their name through uh, a younger sibling and by younger, they're um, uh, a sophomore. So just getting ready for that junior year when, when college coaches are, are sending out offers and scholarships. And so it was a sophomore, but when I called the family was like, is this NCSA? No, we did this with his older sibling and we had a terrible time. Like, like I can't believe you guys would call again. And so my tactic immediately was like, oh, okay, like, I'm so sorry. Like, I, I'm actually new here to this company as well. And 
it'd be great insight for me to understand like what what was your experience like like how did you uh why did why did you feel this way like because then i can understand like from a, uh, my perspective what they're doing wrong at, at this company that i just started working for here and uh that just took their guard down a little bit and uh they were like oh okay well you know we 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 signed up and you know we didn't didn't end up finding a, a college and then we're taught to like peel the onion you know like Okay, so so why didn't it work out for you? You said you got it and uh, you didn't find it a great college. What happened? And they they were like, you know, well, well, I thought we'd connect all these college coaches, but nobody reached out to us. And um, so I was like, okay, so they weren't reaching out to you. Were you reaching out to them? Uh, were you using the software to to reach out to them? And they're like, you know, well, like we we didn't really. Um, we, you know, we didn't really do that. We kind of thought, I'm like, okay, so, so we, did, did you not know that you could reach out to them? They're like, you know what? I'll be honest. We probably didn't do as much as we could have. We could have done that a little bit more. And then it like kind of flipped. And then it went from them being really, really mad to being like, yeah, I guess, I guess we could have done more. You know, we could have used it more and we could have actually used it for the software that it is. I'm like, right. Do you want to do that for the younger sibling? <laughs> like, or like, you know, you know, or, or is this, have you been burned too much? Like, help me understand, like, wh where are you at? You go, you know, I'll talk to my wife about it. And I'll I talk to uh, whatever their, their, their student athlete's name was. And um, you know what, can we, can we connect maybe tomorrow or later in the week? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, sure. And then th that was kind of the, the result of it. I, you know, like that's pretty much the worst is like, the, the worst is the people that expect, hey, we signed up for the software, get us a college scholarship. And, and they feel angry and, um, and uh, misled if, um, if maybe whoever, whoever it was, maybe they were less honest and were like, this will get you a scholarship when it's really, it's like, we'll give you a tool to help you connect with student athletes. You better use it a lot. It's LinkedIn for student athletes, basically. So if you're not using LinkedIn a lot, you're not going to get the job you want. The same thing for this. So that's what mm -hmm. the worst calls look like for me are families that are like, we paid you this money. My kid's not in like a top school. And it's usually a miscomprehension uh, of what it is that they got, you know. And so it feels like me dealing with the problems of maybe a less direct salesperson for the company. <laughs> how, many, uh, how many of those have turned around for a sale? Uh, well, that one, I believe at least was, they said they at least um, got on the call with the specialist, which they're essentially the closer, basically the person. Uh, and so they, I, I don't know if they signed up again, or if they just reactivated the free version for their younger student mm -hmm. athlete to be like, Hey, we'll, we'll still use it. We won't get all the bells and whistles, but we'll still use it. Um, so that was one, but not all of them. <laughs> it's not like that's like the one success story from flipping it. Other people, you know, uh, they they just are like they're 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 cognizant that it's some type of scheme. You know, it's like they're they're, mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're sorry, they're um, misconceiving it as some type of scheme, I should say, and and uh, misinterpreting it that way. Yeah. AJ, yeah. what what is your uh, big? What's the worst thing you've seen? Uh, too much. I'm gonna know. I'm weathered to it, to be honest. <laughs> um, no, you get people cursing at you, right? And um, you know, you have people that will say, "I'm not, you know, I'm never working with X again." Click. Um, I sometimes don't mind the people that are really kind of rude. Um, to Alex's standpoint. Like, it seems like the parents are going to need to do a lot of work to mm -hmm. get something out of whatever the service is. Mm -hmm. I've legitimately have worked with businesses, have gotten them big contracts, and have listened to sales calls with them answering the phone like I'm providing them an opportunity to drive more sales to their business through larger, you know, corporations. And they, I can hear on a recorded line them answering the phone saying, what? Mm -hmm. So sometimes avoiding those people to work with if you're in a you know business that you're trying to continually work continuously work with this person and their success is gaining business it's like all right are these people good pe people people to do business with mm -hmm. um so yeah i've i've um 
I've been cursed at. I've, you know, been all of that, to be honest. Um, so if I, I kind of get notions, right. If I'm like dealing with someone like, that's like, this is how you answer the phone or the phone doesn't go to a voicemail. Like how, how are your credible business and, and this, mm -hmm. this and that. I like what Alex did. I always try to say like a few things. One, like that's exactly why I was hired to mm -hmm. kind of shit, like to, to turn around these accounts. And actually I'm not even calling about that. What I'm calling about is this, mm -hmm. just kind of like getting them off their balance. And then um, I always will try to get people like, well, fill in some color for me. Like, let mm -hmm. me know, like Alex said, like fill in some color. Something I've done in the past, like quite a bit is like, no problem. Why don't you let me know exactly what you did or what happened? I'll fill in a note. Hopefully no one can reach, no one will reach out to you. Hey, and if this conversation makes sense for me to reach out another time, I will. Mm -hmm. it does not, it's not like uber successful, but like Alex, how do I keep the door open? Mm -hmm. I mean, ultimately, like when someone, I was listening to um, an audio book while I was driving this, this week. Uh, through the Carolinas, and I forget what it's called to be honest. Um, never split the difference, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. And the guy was saying that, like, no, it's actually like good because, like, mm -hmm. you can get to the brass tacks of why they're interested and start working on, on that, kind of like Alex did. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't know. I've had like people said that they were going to sue us, sue me, whatever, whatever yeah. you name it. It's, it's almost like comical, some, and, um, at the end of the day, I feel like you just got to like have good self-talk being like, all right, that person's, you know, not normal or maybe they're having a bad day. There's plenty yeah. of people who screamed and yelled at me and I would call the next week, the next day, the next month and I would earn their business. Yeah. So like that's a thing. Um, mm -hmm. But having like a good pulse of your prospect, it, like it really like you could be putting your head through the wall a billion times if you keep calling the same type of people. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, for instance, like we sell digital marketing strategies. If someone has a website from 1992, yeah, they need a new website, but if they haven't changed it by now, there's a good chance they're not going to. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you got to pick and choose those battles. But for instance, like, you know, Alex having a former client, it's like, well, listen, we have a bunch of new, we have this new feature. We didn't have that back a couple mm -hmm. of years ago. Like you might, might, might be interested on that and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, taking it with a grain of salt, I think helps because it could really ruin your day and like, all right, I'm done calling for the day. Screw that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <There's laughs> some... I feel like a piece of crap. I, I have some calls that are like my coffee break calls where I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to take a walk. I'm going to take a walk after that reset. Mm -hmm. I'm going to reset yeah. and uh, grab a, a water or something and, and, and try and change out of my mindset. But I think what you said is, is huge where it's like it follow up and calling those people and just catching them at the right time is really big because most of the time it's like, they just think it's a random telemarketer, right? Like, and they just think it's some canned thing. Whereas like yeah. if you catch them on the right time, it's so important to not have like have a short memory and to to bring the same enthusiasm and curiosity that like third time you catch them mm -hmm. and and be at that baseline. Even if it's been like I've had clients where they're like, we had a great conversation and then they ghost me. And then I'm like, we're emailing back and forth and they just stop. And I'm mm -hmm. like, what the, what the fuck? And I, and I'm like, mm -hmm. if like early on, I'd be so pissed and be like, well, I, excuse me, we were emailing, you know, mm -hmm. but then now as I've gotten like more tenured around it, I'm just like, okay, like next time, are we still able to do this? Where are you guys at? You know, like, and, mm -hmm. and continuing the same messaging because they might've had, like, I had it once where there was a death in the family and someone had to leave and they, mm. they weren't in the office. That's mm -hmm. tough. Yeah, and that's tough. And it, it's nothing. Yeah, that personal. is challenging when there's like sudden changes, and it's, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, everyone's human, right? They have stuff going on. Jake, mm -hmm. you were saying death in a family. Well, I was just saying it's nothing personal to you. It's a, uh, it's something that it's a, a third. Yeah. I think I get what you're saying control. too. Yeah, it's, one, it's one, something one. that they're they're dealing with, so you shouldn't take personal uh, plight with it, right? Um, if, if if that's what's going on in their life, I think Jake's back. Jake's back. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, to your point, right? Like we have to remember 
anyone that's in sales or cold calling or whatever, you're interrupting their day. Mm -hmm. Every single time you are taking them away from something. And if it, you're calling on a decision maker or, you know, even like yourself, Alex, you're calling on parents, like there is other priorities that they need to be doing. Um, and I think like we forget about that, that we forget and people forget that like you are interrupting someone that they're just, you know, a human that could be having a bad day. Yeah. Um, something I try to like ease the tension with right away and get their permission is like, Hey, I know I inter I'm interrupting your day. Uh, do you have 30 seconds so I can share why I'm calling? You, sh you know, they say, yes, that's great. They say, no, I'm like, okay, when would be a better time for me to call at or, you know, they just tell you to, you know, go F off. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, another way to put that too is to say, hey, we've never spoken before, like cutting the tension that this is a cold call. Um, do you have like, you know, do you have 60 seconds? Not even say a minute, say say the seconds because it shows kind of how direct it would be. Mm -hmm. um, but like at the end of the day, it's just like you are interrupting, you are interrupting someone. You have a brief second to get their attention and even if you do it perfectly, they might tell you to like go scratch. So yeah. it's almost kind of goes back to like the stress part. Like we all have pipeline. We all have goals. If you don't have a big pipeline, then you don't like, then you really shouldn't be excited about any sales. Like you really right. shouldn't. Mm -hmm. I was going through with my director and I just like land a deal and, you know, put me up some charts here. And he's like, what do you have in your pipeline? I was like, I, was like, I got nothing. I mm -hmm. had about six things that like could potentially be something, but there wasn't anything. Right. So I think when you have that level setting, your level of setting yourself to, hey, I'm making phone calls. And granted, guys, it's I know you both could agree. It's pretty easy to just make a dial. And that this is my job. I have to make X amount of dials. And yeah. this is how I'm going to get paid. This is how I can get something like that's it. You know, in comparison to like Jake's example of manual labor, or, mm -hmm. hey, sitting in a cubicle, like doing things right. you know, all the time. But like the other aspect, right, is just like leveling with yourself of, hey, I don't have much going on. Let's go back to that foundation piece. What do I need to be done? But if you can have this internal self-talk of like, all right, that was weird. Let me get back on the phone and call with someone else. Or, mm -hmm. hey, that person must have been had something going on. Or, hey, I don't want to work with that guy anyway. And you just have an honest conversation of your pipeline and your business. I mean, other people need to do that too. Like, for instance, both of our fathers are, are small business owners. And if yeah. they don't have a lot of business, uh, you know, going in the future, sure, they can worry about that or they can just get to working, you know? Yeah. And that's just the reality of the situation and the honesty you need to have within the self-talk to kind of keep yourself going. The mm -hmm. more you rely on that one family, Alex, or the one, you know, business, Jake and uh, AJ on that deal. Oh, if that close, if that close, then you're screwed. You know, mm -hmm. oh, I just need to make one meeting, one meeting, one meeting. And if you don't get that, then that's where it starts to really build and ruminate. Like, yeah. like you said, Jake, it's all about these small actions. And, and I think almost like the self-talk you have within yourself really helps. And I can imagine it helps other professions as well. Absolutely. I, the, um, I like the metaphor that I think is pretty popular in sales of um, just like you're fishing. You just got to put your, you got to, you got to cast your line for every call. You got to cast your line and at least uh, put it in the water. You know what I mean? At least just, just put it in the water because that that at least for me is a me uh, uh, a clear mental framing of a calmness, a waiting and and an acceptance that you can't force the fish to bite. You can't force uh, these people to be the right person for what it is that you're trying to call about. And the the further you can distance or disassociate yourself from that result, and just associate yourself with the effort that you've put in that day. Um, like I mentioned, the notes that I take. I'm like tallying every one of my calls. That's what I build up my esteem on for the day of like, I did a good job today. I made it, I did my job. The pond that I was fishing in wasn't a lot of fish today, but not, you know, just get, still going to go tomorrow, you know, but I did what I needed to do today. And um, I think it gives you a little bit more of that, that liberty uh, moving forward when somebody, you know, somebody, Somebody texted texted me, uh, I'm going to get you fired. I can't believe you 
you know, it would call how unprofessional I like sent it to my manager and he goes, well, that's a tough one. And then just like, mm-hmm. that was sort of it. And, um, it much easier when that isn't tied up in, I need this result for this person, you know, like it, it's just another tally for me. It's just another casting of the line. Uh, it's, it's, I'm just dis- like more disassociated with the result, more as like lining myself up with my effort and what I put in for that day, you know? So J bone, do we have anything? I think, uh, I think I'm it's so a great place to, to I'm so nervous to say anything. <laughs> I'm just going to cut out. So I, I'm trying to listen and keep my bandwidth low. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I mean, I, I, Totally agree. Oh, it's, that's every, it's been every time. Uh, well, <laughs> <my back. laughs> Jay bone why don't we, why don't we end the podcast with this? What kind of uh, advice or feedback would you have for someone that's maybe just starting out like a 22, 23 year old in regards to, you know, any profession, but handling, you know, that their day to day. There's one thing I'd say, and it's, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, it, consistency. It's consistency and um, control what you can control. I think mm. is the biggest stuff. Yeah. Right? Perfect. Yeah. yeah. yard. Lock in, add value, enjoy the ride. <laughs> Clock out. Clock out. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, uh, you know, clearly we'll have, you know, more conversations around this. This was a pretty big one, but I, I feel as if um, the reason why we have seen success or, 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 or kind of share similar instances is, is, is a lot of what we've gained, um, even from eighth grade going over to the football team and lifting and right. And, and the commitment and sports <laughs> psychology you just get from playing sports that you can just put into work. I mean, a lot of things that you guys said with consistency, commitment, um, attitude, and, and just in general, I, I guess, mindset, right? So much goes into it. And I think the one thing that you guys both said that I, I think many people need to take away is that it's not just work. You mm-hmm. need to focus on everything, right? Mm-hmm. Everything is one moving, you know, flowing ocean and if you're not taking care of yourself outside of work, it's not going to help you inside and vice versa. Yeah. So, fellas, love you both. Thank you for coming on. Love you. And, uh, can I have one Jake. request? Can we can we put Darren Waller's mixtape as the soundtrack for this? Or uh, We cannot. <laughs> we cannot. We can put a bunch of money signed when uh, they, they, they get rid of them and they have $12 million. Good. It froze up and laughing. But... No, Kadarius Tony is going to be on the back of this one. So (laughs) (laughs) awesome. All right, fellas. Thanks for joining everyone. Thanks for watching. All right. Love you, brother.